Welcome to the Intimate Marriage Podcast, where I teach educated, successful couples how to have incredible, passionate relationships so that you can stop compromising and start feeling fully alive in your relationship. I'm your host, Alexandra Stockwell, aka The Intimacy Doctor. I'm a physician and an intimate marriage expert. My husband and I have been married for 26 years. We have four children and full professional lives, and we've created an amazing relationship. I've also shown hundreds of couples how to do so as well. If you want to deepen your understanding of your own relationship and learn to access new heights of emotional, sensual, and erotic intimacy, you're in the right place. I will show you how. Now let's dive in. Uncompromising intimacy. That is something that I talk about often. I think it is really fundamental to having a passionate, intimate marriage. If this is your first time hearing one of my podcast episodes or getting to know me, I'm going to spell out the basic concept. If this is something that you've encountered before, you've read my book called Uncompromising Intimacy or listened to any other podcast, interview, or read article where I address uncompromising intimacy. This truly is a concept that is worth revisiting because one can always go deeper and deeper and deeper in its application, which follows really understanding it clearly. So throughout the world, the most common relationship advice that is given is that the key to a great marriage is compromise. You need to be good at compromising in order to have a healthy, lasting marriage. That is completely wrong. If what you want is a conflict-free, bland companionship, definitely refine your ability to compromise because that is exactly what it will deliver. You can avoid conflict, move forward together in a comfortable way, but you give up the electricity, the turn on, the adventure, the spontaneity, the passion that comes when you are uncompromising. The catch is that most people misunderstand what that means, which is because the typical use of the word uncompromising means to be exacting, to not compromise and always do things your way or require that they be done your own way. That's not what I'm advocating. That is not going to build the kind of relationship that I'm really talking about. Insofar as when you compromise, it means that You're holding back what's important to you, thoughts, feelings, desires, challenges, various emotions. You're holding them back so that your partner can be more comfortable. So your partner can have an easier time, not get his or her feathers ruffled. Well, when I use the word uncompromising, I mean that instead of holding back aspects of who you really are so your partner is more comfortable. Instead, you bring the truth of who you are to your relationship. If you have a thought or a feeling or a desire, something that's important to you, or even not that important, but it's true for you, bring it to the relationship. Does that mean you're going to get your own way? No, it definitely doesn't. But in being uncompromising, the most important thing is not actually the outcome and what occurs. What is important is that there is no part of you that you feel is unwelcome or doesn't have a place in the context of your marriage. So to be specific, let's say... You really want to have Thai food and your partner and your children all want to have Italian food. Well, in the typical use of the term uncompromising, 
you'd make everyone go get Thai food, but I'm not advocating that. That just puts your partner in the position of compromising because he wants Italian. So that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is bring your actual desire into your relationship. Let your partner know that even though you've had Italian every time you've gone out together as a family, as long as you can remember, what you're really craving is Thai. Let him know or her. And you still might go out to Italian, but it's going to feel really different because you were able to speak the truth. And honestly, what is the most likely thing to happen is that you say what you want And that brings an energy, an openness to connection. And then you come up with some new idea that neither one of you thought of. It may turn out that your partner is just used to going along with Italian because that's what you've been doing. And actually your partner would be happy to try something new. It could be that you look in Google Maps and it turns out that there's a new Thai restaurant and it's two doors down from an Italian restaurant. And so it's easy to pick up some Thai food and eat outside at the Italian restaurant while the rest of your family eats Italian. You could get takeout. There are so many different ways. But when you are uncompromising in the sense of bringing what is true for you into your relationship, then you have a chance to actually discover what's going to work the best for both of you. Now, this is all an introduction. I actually did an entire episode on uncompromising intimacy, which I will link to in the show notes. So if this is a topic that interests you, check out the show notes, listen to the episode focused on, like the title of it is Uncompromising Intimacy. I wanted to review all of that to set the context as we now dive deep into the third key to an intimate marriage, namely, be kind. So two episodes ago, Cultivate Curiosity is the name of the episode, and that is the first key to an intimate marriage. The second key to an intimate marriage is Embrace Honesty, which was last week's episode. And this week, I'm focusing on the third key to an intimate marriage, namely, Be kind. The reason that I reviewed the concept of uncompromising intimacy and shared what I mean by uncompromising and why it's so important not to compromise, but instead to be uncompromising in the sharing of what is true for you is because people hear that and they wonder how to do that. How exactly does that work? And the answer unequivocally lies in this third key to an intimate marriage. It lies in being kind. It lies in learning how to be kind. And by the way, I have a module in the Aligned and Hot Marriage program dedicated to be kind It's not a simple thing. I've articulated a whole technology to being kind. There are specific guidelines for doing that. So go ahead and have that value. But you really need to learn how to actually apply it, how to embody it. And if that's something that's important to you, definitely check out the Aligned and Hot Marriage program. There's a link to it in the show notes. Anyway, This whole idea of being uncompromising is radical, and it was radical for me too when I experienced it and then articulated it as the essential unifying umbrella theme in my body of work, helping couples live more vibrant, connected, intimate, juicy, dynamic relationships. This episode is sponsored by the Aligned and Hot Marriage Program. 
my signature program designed for busy, educated couples who want to experience more closeness, more connection, and more passion. Go to AlignedHotMarriage.com for all the juicy details. When I first got married, there were many times when I thought my husband just wasn't actually interested in some of my deeper desires because he never asked me any questions. This was before he and I had learned to cultivate curiosity, and so I thought the fact that he didn't ask questions meant he wasn't interested. Turns out that actually wasn't true at all. Once we brought in the value of cultivating curiosity, I discovered he was very interested in things that I had previously never spoken. Then... I became aware of my desires. I actually was inspired and created my desires program. It's called Desires Awaken the Woman Within. It's one of my only programs specifically just for women because we are conditioned to disconnect from our desire, not to value it, and sometimes not even to know what our desires are. So that is a whole process that if you haven't learned how to know what you want, how to recognize, how to honor your desire, by all means, check out that program. It's it's short and very potent. Anyway, I learned to be aware of what my desires are because let me just be really explicit. The first time someone asked me as an adult, as a grown up, what do you want? And it wasn't a waiter taking my order in a restaurant, but like a, a much deeper question. I really had no idea because I wasn't walking around asking myself that question. So when I learned to know what it is that I want, when I came to understand the importance of bringing my feelings into my marriage so that all of me can be alive in the dynamic that I share with my husband, I felt rejected often or like my husband didn't approve of some of my desires and I wanted him to get behind me and my desires. And that really didn't happen often. I mean, sometimes it did. It did when it came to things like parenting and financial decisions, but things that were more nuanced and had to do with touching and being touched and the quality of attention he brought when listening to me speak, these things that really are like oxygen to a relationship And I just thought he didn't actually want me to have those things because he was so, like, closed down when I would bring things up or defensive or would change the topic, all kinds of different things. And then, what a revelation that I'm sharing with you today. It turned out He is a big yes to me having what I want. He is a big yes to my desires. What he is really a no to was not my desires, but was how I was speaking to him. He did not want to be spoken to with any kind of desperation in my voice, any kind of put down, any kind of projection of my disappointment on him, any resentment that I didn't already have, the thing that I wanted. He wanted me to be kind. And this really has been a game-changing awareness for me that actually I can say anything, I can bring anything up when talking to him so long as I do it with kindness. Because more than what I want, think, and feel, 
He wants to be treated with respect and kindness. Now, this may sound simple, but to learn to be kind, as I said earlier, there's a whole technology to doing that in a way that when you implement it, you get to reap the kinds of rewards that I reap in my marriage every day. Let me tell you about a couple that I coached. I actually think it was the very first couple that were private clients of mine. They really loved one another and they had a few issues that they were kind of tangled up in and generally they had a great relationship but they wanted some guidance in untangling these particular topics, which I was very excited to do for them because I was a new coach, so excited to be coaching a couple. And while in that, those first few coaching sessions with them, I was kind of shocked because I knew they cared about one another. And actually, she was a friend of mine. So I knew them socially as well. And I, I saw how she spoke with him. And I was like, shocked and you know why is she speaking with him with that tone of voice and that energetic and I was even more astonished that he didn't look offended he didn't look like this was unusual at all he just was kind of shut down and she was operating with the assumption that it was because of what she was saying The thing is that while I sat there observing this and kind of judging it, honestly, like, why is she talking to him that way? Not far behind that observation was the awareness that that is exactly how I speak with my husband. We're so used to the idea that women being meek and weak and withdrawn, not standing up for themselves is just so repulsive for you and me and all the other women who are educated, competent, accomplished, know how to make things happen in our lives with our work, our careers, our family, our household, parenting, like all that emotional labor and actual work that we do every single day, we are used to being competent, accomplished. And with that, for whatever reason, there comes an edge, especially when our partner is essentially a peer, someone who is also educated, respectful, a good match for us intellectually and other ways as well. If you've married someone who's super dominating, has narcissistic tendencies, then what I'm saying doesn't apply. But if you married someone who is essentially a peer, there is this way in which We women have gotten used to speaking with a sting and an acidity and it completely works against what we actually want. So be kind is absolutely the ticket to being uncompromising in a way that creates intimacy and such exquisite depths. Now, I've spoken a lot to the women in heteronormative relationships, and I want to say something to men as well. There is a way when you speak up for yourself that it's very common that you wait. You wait and you wait and you wait. You don't speak up when you become aware, but you speak up 
about what you want that you're not experiencing when you're already frustrated, when you're feeling taken for granted, ignored, misunderstood, whatever your particular flavor is. And the same principle applies. If you're like wrapping your desire in resentment, it's that wrapping paper that we experience first. And often we never even open up the package because that resentment is so unappealing. We get defensive, dismissive, critical, shut down, whatever the flavor is. But when you really aspire to be kind, not as some like kindergarten niceness. I mean the kind of kindness where you are saying raw, gritty truth or confronting erotic fantasies or deep, heartfelt frustrations or sharing some aspect of your personality that you really want to have seen in order to be successful with doing that you've got to prioritize being kind at least as much as you're prioritizing sharing this with your beloved in a way which is uncompromising which will make you feel so good and create the most incredible intimacy between the two of you so I would really love to know what you think of this podcast episode. Please go to alexandrastockwell.com, go to the contact page and let me know. This is such important material that you need to implement in order to really enjoy more delight, more turn on, more intimacy, more of the best stuff in relationship. So I'm ready for you. The Aligned and Hot Marriage Program, I've redone the workbooks. It is so beautiful to see these workbooks and watch the videos. And I just would love so much to give you the very easily implementable, precise tools so that you can be kind in order to transform your relationship in the ways that you desire. Let me show you how, what possible benefit is there in doing it the way you have been if you don't have the results you desire. As I've previously said, you can work on these six keys to an intimate marriage in any particular order I share them in the order, well, starting with the one which is easiest to implement and then progressing into the ones that require more self-awareness, more sophistication, more courage. So we started with Cultivate Curiosity. We then talked about Embrace Honesty. And I'm just, I've really been looking forward to sharing with you the whys and wherefores of be kind. And I'd really love to show you in more detail how exactly to do this, which is in the module waiting for you, calling to you with your name at the Aligned and Hot Marriage Program. And next week, I will be back with the fourth key to an intimate marriage. So I look forward to continuing the conversation with you then. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Intimate Marriage Podcast. If you're ready to deepen your relationship and create a truly intimate, delicious, and vibrant marriage, head over to alexandrastockwell.com and choose the program that's right for you.